This project is sponsored by Technor Apex. Click on the link in the description below and visit technorapex.com to learn about the new Synergy hose. The design for this bench is based on a bench that I saw at a local park. I'll make my bench a little smaller and change a few other dimensions so I can use the wood that I have here in the shop. I'll get started with the legs, cutting them to a rough length and then squaring them up to an inch and three quarters. A drum sander is a really handy tool to have in the shop and I'm using it now to remove the blade marks on all four sides of the legs. The next step is to set up a stop block and cut the legs to their final length. I'll need to make a pattern to create the curve in the seat. This is a piece of half inch MDF. I'll rip it to width at three and a half inches and then cross cut it to length two inches heavy to account for the tenons. After finding the center and a good measurement for the curve, I'll clamp stop blocks at each end and rip a thin piece of MDF and bend it to make the curve. Now I'll trace that bend and cut the curve using the bandsaw. I'm building this bench with white oak, number one because I have it, number two I like the way white oak looks, and number three white oak is a great choice for outdoor projects. These are the side rails of the bench and I'll cut them to a rough length. I'll cut one for each side of the bench and an extra one that will be ripped in half and used for the stretchers at the bottom of the bench. I'll rip the rails at three and a half inches, then move the fence in and rip the stretchers at an inch and a quarter. Now I can set up a stop block and cut the parts to length. When I cut the tenons, I'll use the crosscut sled in the Powermatic saw, which is set up with a flat ground sawtooth blade. This is great for cutting tenons because you get a nice smooth surface on the cut. Now I can use the pattern I made earlier to cut the curve in the rails. The wood that I'm using is thicker than the router bit is long so I'll need to make this cut in two passes. I want to thank Technor Apex for sponsoring this project. I've been working with Technor Apex now for about five years and this is their newest hose, the Technor Apex Synergy. The new Synergy hose features ergonomic twist grip for easy attachment, anti-kinking performance and all-weather flexibility, a full 5 8 water flow, resists kinking at both ends, puncture and abrasion resistance for maximum durability, and extremely lightweight, portable and easy to coil and store. The Technor Apex Synergy hose is designed with you in mind. Visit Technor Apex at the link in the description below and learn about the new Synergy Hose. The next step is to mark the legs where the mortises will need to be cut. This is my old Delta mortising machine that I bought probably 25 years ago. I think for maybe $160. But anyway, I don't use it all that often. But every once in a while it comes in really handy and it doesn't take up that much space in the shop. 
Now I can fit the pieces together and start to think about how long I want to make the bench. I decided on 44 inches because that's just a little bit shorter than this eight quarter white oak board that's been hanging around the shop for a while. I'll rip the slats a little heavier than seven eighths of an inch and that leaves a little room for sanding to remove the blade marks. Now you can see how the bench is starting to take shape and I really like the curve in the seat. This is something new for me. I haven't made a seat like this before but it looks comfortable and I think it's going to look great. I'll use the slat closest to the leg to determine the height of the front and back rails. Now I'll take a measurement for the front and back rails and get to work on cutting them to size. With the front and back rails cut to length and width, I'll use the crosscut sled to cut the tenons at each end, first cutting the shoulders and then cutting the cheeks. Now I'll measure and mark where the mortises will need to be cut in the legs to accept the rails. Okay, well I've got the bench, dry fit up here on the workbench, and there's, there's definitely a bit of a give. If I had used, say, a full inch or an inch and a quarter by two inch to make the seat parts, I might have been able to avoid using a brace in the center, but since I didn't, I am going to add that brace, and to do that, I'm gonna take a measurement from end to end, which is 15 and a half. I'll cut that curve in using the same jig, and then I'll hold the piece up and scribe a line at the bottom to rip it to width. I want to remind everyone of the woodworking project plans available on my website. I just added a new one last week, the planter stand. Really fun project, and I think it's a great time of the year to build something like that. So I hope that you'll click on the link in the description below. Check out the plans. They all have free video tutorials designed to help guide you through the project that you'll find right here on YouTube. So I hope that you'll click on the link in the description below and let me help you with your next woodworking project. Now I'll trim this piece off using the table saw and I'll set the fence to cut on this side of the line and the off cut will be the piece I use. I'm going to cut a 7 degree angle on all four sides at the top of the leg as a design detail. The combination of painter's tape and a zero clearance fence on the miter saw will help prevent tear out while making the cuts. With the bottom of the leg up tight against the stop block, I'll make the cut, rotating the leg after each cut until a 7 degree angle is cut on all four sides of the leg. Next, I'll use a chamfer bit in the router to add a chamfer at the bottom of the legs. This will prevent tear out when the bench is moved along the ground. I'm planning to add nylon domes to the bottom of the legs as well. With the legs of the bench finished, I'll focus on the wooden slats. I'll start by running all the slats through the drum sander and take a little off each side. Next I'll cut them to length and add a chamfer to the top.
with the last slat finished, I'm also going to add that same chamfer to the front and back rails. If you listen closely, you'll start to hear tear out when I make this cut. For this reason, I decided to use the climb cutting technique when cutting the chamfer. Climb cutting is when you move the router in the same direction that the bit is turning. This can be considered dangerous, but if you're careful, it's a good skill to learn that will help you avoid tear out. With all the parts made, shaped and sanded, it's time to assemble the bench. I'll start with the sides and let the glue set up for a few hours before adding the front and back rails. Now I'm ready for finish, and for this project, I'm using Total Boat's Amber Halcyon. I'll finish the bottom of the slats before attaching them to the bench. After spraying a few coats on the bottom of the seat slats and the bench, I'll attach the slats to the bench, first attaching the end pieces, then the center, and then the two pieces between the end and the center, making sure they're evenly spaced. Okay, well, I'm real happy with the way this turned out. I like the curved seat, little extra work, but definitely comfortable. And I like this amber halcyon that I used for the finish here. I'm going to apply a few more coats, probably one more coat of the amber halcyon and then clear gloss because this bench is going to live outside. I don't have plans for this project yet on my site, hopefully in the next few weeks. In the meantime, I have a ton of great projects there. And they all have video tutorials right here on YouTube. So I hope that you'll click on the link and check those out. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. If you're looking for a good woodworking project, check out the plans on my website. The detailed plans, along with my free step-by-step -step video tutorials right here on YouTube, will help guide you through the project and help you make something that I know you'll be proud of. With Mother's Day just around the corner, maybe this planter would be a good project to put at the top of the list. Links to the plans and the video tutorial are in the description below.